A fourth Senate Republican called out, to a degree, President Trump for pushing China and Ukraine to investigate his domestic political rival, Joe Biden. Senator Rob Portman of Ohio told the Columbus Dispatch, quote, the president should not have raised the Biden issue on that call, period. Mild, sure, but most Republicans remain unwilling to say anything at all. When Utah Republican Senator Mitt Romney criticized the president's request, President Trump attacked him repeatedly. And as CNN's Dana Bash now reports, that attack is now serving as an example to others in the GOP. Most Republicans are so unsure about how to play this, they're in virtual hiding. And the few who are speaking out, well, listen to House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy this morning. You watched what the president said. He's not saying China's investigate. Actually, he did. Likewise, listen. China should start an investigation into the Biden. Some Republicans tried to explain that away with a different tactic, deflect, claiming Trump was just kidding. Well, I, I, I doubt if the China comment was serious, to tell you the truth. CNN contacted more than 80 GOP congressional offices about the president inviting China to investigate his political rival. Barely a handful responded, most notably Mitt Romney, who said... The president's brazen and unprecedented appeal to China and to Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden is wrong and appalling. In response, the president went after Romney, calling him pompous and a fool, clearly intended as a warning to other Republicans weighing whether to speak out. It didn't stop Maine's Susan Collins, who did criticize the president, which plays well with Democrats she needs to win re-election in her blue state. She said... The president made a big mistake by asking China to get involved in investigating a political opponent. But she also echoed Trump's loyalists pummeling the House Democrat leading the impeachment probe. The chairman of the House Intelligence Committee misrepresented and misled people about what was in the transcript. Mitch McConnell, also on the ballot in 2020, is raising money for his Kentucky race with a promise to protect the president. All of you know your constitution. The way that impeachment stops is when a Senate majority with me as majority leader. McConnell's campaign aides argue that impeachment is galvanizing the GOP base as much as the 2018 Kavanaugh nomination fight, which contributed to several Democratic Senate defeats. Colin Powell, never a Trump fan, all but called Republicans cowardly. They need to get a grip. And when they see things that are not right, they need to say something about it. Some Republicans, like Rob Portman of Ohio, are now starting to follow a roadmap laid out by Fox's Tucker Carlson, who penned an op-ed admitting the president should not have encouraged a foreign leader to investigate his political opponent, but said that is not an impeachable offense. Now, one GOP lawmaker told me today that, like Rob Portman, he thinks the president's call to Ukraine's leader and comments about China were, quote, totally inappropriate. But he also told me he isn't ready to say that publicly yet, Jake, because he knows that he's not sure. He said if there's, quote, another jack in the box out there. So he's reluctant to go too far in defending the president. And he told me a lot of his colleagues tell him that they agree. All right, Dana Bash, thank you uh, so much. Uh, Jen Psaki, let me let me go to the quote that we heard in that piece uh, from a campaign consultant for Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, mm -hmm. who's on the ballot next November. Mm -hmm. Quote, no issue has motivated Republican donors like this since Kavanaugh, the Supreme mm -hmm. Court battle over Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, are you afraid of that? I mean, I know you support impeaching the president or the mm -hmm. investigation, at, at least. Are you afraid on behalf of Democrats that this actually might galvanize uh, the Republican base? I'm certain it will galvanize a portion of the ba a base, but it's important to remember that McConnell is running in Kentucky. He is up for re-election, as you mentioned, in 2020. Uh, that's a state where Donald Trump is incredibly popular. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be an easy hurdle for Democrats to defeat him, but Democrats have a pretty good candidate, um, and they're raising a lot of money on things like selling Moscow Mitch material. So, you know, he's feeling some heat on the ground. What was interesting to me about the story and some of the reporting on this is that they're spending a lot of money on online, which is smart, um, mm -hmm. digitally. It's not the same message that Mitch McConnell is delivering about how he's going to approach the process here, right? He's saying, I'll stop impeachment online, appealing to the base, trying to raise money. But here he's saying, I'll abide by the Senate process. That's probably smart politically. I don't know if he'll get caught up in that. But long story short, I'm not scared. Mitch McConnell is running in a very red state. He has to keep that in mind. If he wants to keep the majority, be the majority leader, he needs to keep his seat as well. And, and, and Chairman Rogers, let me just ask you, <clears throat> it doesn't really seem to me to be all that difficult to say 
that no politician should be able to lean on a foreign country for an investigation into their political rival. This is not some crazy revelation. I mean, that would just be complete chaos and the end of free and fair elections in the United States. And yet we only have four Republican senators out of 53, is it, that are even willing to acknowledge that that's wrong. Yeah. Well, I think they're probably internally acknowledging publicly, it's wrong though, and publicly, yeah. trying to figure out a way to communicate it. And I think they would be wise to come out and talk about, hey, listen, this, we think this behavior is inappropriate. Uh, and we're going to talk to the president about it. We think he ought to go in a different way and then go off onto their positive message of all the good things that are happening. I think there's a way for them to do this. I don't think being silent for much longer is, is probably a good path for them. They will get questions back home. They're going to get questions here. You might as well take it on head on. And again, you don't have to throw the president under the bus if you're one of those Republicans. You just have to say, hey, this particular activity and this particular uh, his expression to do these things, which I, by the way, I think are, are terrible uh, and completely inappropriate. Yeah. He, they ought to be able to have some version of that so people understand, listen, we don't think this is appropriate. It shouldn't be the norm. It's not something that we're going to uh, say is okay in the future. And we'll take up those discussions with the president trying to steer him in a better direction. And you see another thing, another phenomenon, as Dana noted in the PCC, Republicans either just outright denying that President Trump said things that he is on camera saying, yeah. Kevin McCarthy saying, well, he, he didn't call for China to investigate the Bidens. That's like almost a word-for-word -word quote. Right. And then you have all these other people saying, oh, I think he was just joking. There's no evidence that he was joking. Yeah, I mean, I tend to believe that treating people like they're morons is not the best strategy, just in general, as Republicans are crafting their messaging. It's a little alarming when, like, Tucker Carlson is out there with the best messaging we have seen yet for Republicans, which is to say that this was, the president should not have done this. We need to have free and fair elections, and you need to behave like we have free and fair elections, but this isn't worthy of impeachment. That's the Tucker Carlson line. It is the best one that anyone has come up with so far. But I think this gives you an insight into how terrified members of Congress are from the president's party of the president. I mean, Mitt Romney came out there and said this behavior was appalling and the president lost his mind and spent the weekend tweeting at Mitt Romney while Mitt was at a pumpkin patch with his grandkids, like living his dream. So I think there are a lot of Republicans who are legitimately afraid of that tweet. They're afraid of what it's going to do to their fundraising. They're afraid of what it's going to do to the base. And that's part of the reason that we've seen the silence so far. So Republicans who dismiss the president's request to China as a joke, like Marco Rubio um, have have now been tweeting this. This is what Senator Rudy, Rubio tweeted earlier today. POTUS asking China to investigate Biden is wrong, but it isn't going to happen. How can he assert that? Why? I don't understand. Where, where does he get that? In, where does he get that? From? So that's now the fourth um, approach that they've said. First was he's joking. Second was uh, the Democrats are partisan. Third was, well, it's OK. And now it's, it's just not going to happen. I think what you're seeing is the fact that they simply just don't have a strategy here, a coherent strategy um, that. So look, okay, compare this to the Democrats right now. Right. You have Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff doing press conferences alone with a very targeted, very narrow message for where they're going. The Republicans are just sort of all over the place because, again, as Sarah said, they are just afraid of the president. He has a stranglehold on the party. And I think, frankly, what you're seeing is the death of the Northeastern moderate um, and sort of the, the voice within the Republican Party that would have challenged a president 20 years ago, just not there anymore.